What's up, legend? So in this episode, we're, we're talking the secret key to having infinite amounts of money. Now for me, money is a bitch to master and it took me years. However, I'm going to share in this episode the three things that really changed the game for me. Let me start with sharing a little bit of the backstory. So for me, I was a personal trainer and I got into personal training because I saw that as a way to live free, to travel, to uh, you know create wealth. I discovered uh, personal development. I started reading books. I started uh, yeah, understanding selling. I started understanding that whatever I wanted in life, I could, I could uh, set an intention. I could learn. I could you know, start to move in the direction of that thing that I wanted. And so for me, I wanted to, I wanted to live free and I wanted to create wealth. So I became a personal trainer and as a personal trainer, um, I started to create some money and I learned a lot of cool things because prior to being a trainer, I was super awkward. I was really nervous. I was afraid of selling. Um, people scared the shit out of me and, but I had a desire. Well, I had to eat. I had to put food on the table. So it was either I made it as a personal trainer or I was fucked. And so. I just had to get out of my own way. And so me and a, I had a business partner at the time, or he was more like just a colleague and we were building the business together. We used to go down to Brisbane city and we would just find any building. We'd go to the top floor, we'd start at the top and we were just giving out gifting sessions, free sessions. And once people came in free session, we'd do a sales pitch and we'd get them started. So that's how I built my business and, you know, became quite successful, started making decent money. And I guess what I, what I learned when I was there was, uh, yeah, how to sell. And so one of the key things that um, is crucial to mastering money and having infinite amounts of it is uh, the ability to sell and the ability to sell and the ability to sell. <laughs> it's the key. If you can't sell, then... Sure, there are other ways to make money, and you know there's there's many things out there. You, know, you could trade, you could, um, you know, invest in property. But for me, it's like what I've what I've realized and what's been my journey and what I've seen from those around me is that by having the ability to sell, it really sets you up to create freedom in your life and to have influence. And even the ability to sell makes your relationships better, makes parenting better, and makes you a I guess a better human I find because you can persuade people and you can um, inspire people with your ideas. Like I'm doing now, I'm selling. I may not be, I may not be, may not be buying anything, um, but I'm still selling an idea. So having the ability to sell and learning how to sell is a crucial key element to having infinite amounts of money. And so for me, um, during that personal training a gig, I learned how to sell, I got over myself, got comfortable with being uncomfortable. Now, I'm not going to go too much into selling uh, in this podcast. You can save that for another episode of The Rich Mystic Man. Uh, but I just really wanted to impress upon you the importance of learning how to sell. And I've got two other, two other keys here as well, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, but just let me give you a little bit, little bit of insights and take you a little bit deeper and share with you a little bit about um, how I learn and overcome and just a couple of little key point, big picture parts around selling that'll help you with letting go of some of the, the stigma that we have around selling and some of the, the belief systems we have around selling and the things that hold us back from learning how to be, to be a slick, slick. And I, even as I say that word, it's like, oh, I don't want to be the slick salesman. It's like, no, nah, you can be a slick salesman. Nothing wrong with that. So yeah, I became, I was a personal trainer and I was, I was doing pretty well and I had a good clientele base. I was good at what I did. I got clients results. Uh, but what I found is that I was there early in the morning. I was there late at night. And, you know, even if I went on holidays for a week, it was like herding cats trying to get my clients back into the gym after the, after my holiday. And I'm like, this isn't a sustainable business model and it's not really allowing me freedom. I want to travel, but I, I'm not traveling at all. If I go away for a week, half my business goes with me. So I was like, there must be a better way. And so about the same time that I was starting to question, you know, personal training, is this what I want to do? Is this really giving me what I want? 
I had this client that I was training. Her name was Jenny. And she was different from other clients. She just seemed happy. She was happy. And I remember asking her like what time she wanted to train. And so everyone else, pretty much 97% of people that I trained would want to train before work, after work, or maybe lunch times. So it was like from six till nine was busy, from 12 till two was busy, lunchtime rush. And then from like 4.30 to 9.30 at nights, busy because people would come after work, et cetera. Um, I asked Jenny, I said, hey, Jenny, what time, what time do you want to train? She's like, Clint, listen, anytime after 10, um, I'm just not a morning person. And I said, okay. Yeah, what, what? She's like, yeah, there's any time I'm saying you let me know and I'm, I'm pretty flexible. I was like, okay. Anyway, so I got her in about 10 and she was just happy. She just seemed like she enjoyed life. She was bubbly. She was, she just enjoyed what she seemed like she, you ask her about her work, she'd enjoy it. So I got a bit curious about what she did. So I asked her a few questions and she was a network marketer. And I was like, well, that sounds pretty legit. Um, so when I decided that I um, wasn't too fond anymore and I'd sort of outgrown the personal business, uh, sorry, the personal training business, I decided to, um, I decided I was, I'd give this network marketing thing a crack. So I reached out to Jenny. I said, Hey, what are you doing? We'd love to um, get started with what you're doing. And, um, I did that and I didn't make much money. Right. And I'll tell you why in a moment. However, what I did learn during the process was priceless. I learned, you know, because their approach was like they had this thing called the three foot rule. So it's like you try and sell your products to anyone within the three foot of you, you know, whether you're on a train, you're at a bar, you're at, you know, wherever you're in an elevator, you're pitching your product, um, you know, contacting friends and family, writing out lists. And I know a lot of people listening to this is like, oh, that's, that's cringeworthy. And I get it. I get it. However, it, I learned so much. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about selling and I got out of my own way. So the ability to sell is something that needs to happen in the trenches, right? You can read books, you can study, uh, you can go to workshops. You know, I, I'm actually putting out a course called The Rich Man and we're, we're diving deep on sales and marketing, money and leadership. So I actually teach about it and run, and run a workshop on, you know, the art of selling. However, it's like if you just learned about it and didn't actually apply it and do it, you're not going to get better. You're not going to go anywhere. Right, it's it's something that needs to be applied. You need to learn whilst you're in it, and then also too, like what you're selling is going to be different to what I'm selling. Could be some similarities, and the people that you're prospecting and talking to is going to be different to who I'm prospecting and talking to. So, if I was to tell you exactly what to say verbatim, word for word, then it's probably not going to work that well. It's because it's it's a very fluid, um, an intuitive process, right? However, what I'd say to you is like just making a commitment to learning how to sell and knowing that it's going to be uncomfortable. Even to this day, I'm still shit scared of selling. It's very confronting, nerve wracking, pulling, um, getting on that phone or getting on a zoom call or meeting face to face and talking to someone and, and selling them something. It's, it's a, it's a challenging situation, right? However, it's, it's very, it's very also very rewarding because if you can switch the mindset from selling to helping to serving to fulfilling a need and providing a solution to a problem, then essentially I know, you know, through my life and my experience is that, you know, what I sell now is, is super aligned and it helps people. And so people are very thankful. So when I sell them something, they're like grateful. They're like, man, thank you so much. Thank you for, you know, being persistent. Thank you for, you know, helping me to break through my own, my own shit, my own limitations and helping me to say yes and not giving up on me you know, when you're following them up relentlessly. So there's a lot to, to go in around selling, but I just wanted to, for the purpose of this uh, podcast episode, is just impress upon you the importance of learning how to sell. And you don't have to be the best. I'm not the best of the best, but I can sell and I can be consistent with it. And once you know how to sell, then you can be consistent and exponentially scale your income because you have the ability to sell something. Now, I'll get now into the second uh, point, the second key to having infinite amounts of money, which is having a high ticket product. So when I, when I was with this company, it was a low ticket product, right? And yeah, people were making good money, but you had to sell a lot 
right? And you had to sell a lot. You had to build a team, a team of people that were selling a lot. So the idea was like a lot of people doing a little bit. Once I decided to make the move from that company and I found a product that aligned more with my values and it was a high ticket product, right? And when I got selling, I made more money, in fact, four times more money in my first month with this company than I had in the 18 months that I was with the other company. And it wasn't a lot. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't life-changing income. However, when I say that it was life-changing income because I went from like living at home with my mum to like getting a place in Neutral Bay. I got a one-bedroom apartment. I got a car on finance and I started dressing with better clothes. Uh, I got a girlfriend, which is actually the girlfriend that I'm now married with two with three children. And so things started shifting for me, right? Because I now had a high ticket product. So learning how to sell is one thing, but if you're selling a low ticket product, you need to sell a lot to be successful, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it takes more time, energy, and yeah, it's, it's going to take you longer to get to the point of uh, financial freedom. And by having a high ticket product, then you have the ability to make money a lot quicker. So you get a short term return but still having your eyes in the prize of a long-term vision and you know, building something that's going to set you up for life and creating automation. And this is another conversation. Um, but having a high-ticket product gets you a faster return on investment. So if you don't have a high-ticket product to sell, get one. Now, you can become an affiliate of other people's products, and this is what I chose. Um, you know, I found a company that aligned with my values that had a product that stood the test of time, a product that people needed and wanted. And I affiliated with that company and that way I didn't have to worry about building it, creating it, shipping it, all that sort of stuff. I let that company do those parts for me and all I had to do was learn how to sell it. And once I sold it, then the rest of the stuff and you know, the product and the shipping and all that sort of stuff was taken care, care of by the company itself. And I just then got paid a commission. So for me, that was like the most logical uh, path of least resistance and then I had the ability to make not just a couple of hundred dollars per sale like several thousand dollars per per package that I was selling with this company so find something that is high ticket and you know this could be in it could be some product or service that's high ticket that gives you a high ticket commission um, you could create a product it could be like a like a coaching package or something and you know I sell these now as well where I have the rich mystic man um, it's a 12 week experience. It's several thousand dollars. You know, I have the, the rich man program as well, which is also several thousand dollars because the high ticket product, right? So in now, once you have one, you can then align yourself with other ones and have multiple high ticket products that you can then sell. But high ticket product is key because like, you know, let's say I want to, you know, at the moment I want to build a deck on my house and I'm like, okay, cool. It's going to cost 30, 40 grand. I'm like, all right, sweet. So if I had a product, I was going to you know, it's going to give me a three hundred dollars per return. How many products do I need to sell to make thirty or forty grand, as opposed to a high ticket product that's going to give me four k per um sale? How many do I have to sell? Ten, as opposed to hundreds. Okay, if I'm selling a low ticket product, so learning how to sell is key one. Having a high ticket product is key two, and the third one is building a personal brand. This is something that can be done in the background is a way of you expressing, is a way of you sharing. And by building a personal brand, what happens is people begin to connect with you. People start to build trust with you. People start to like you. They start to resonate with you. And you build a personal brand these days using social media. And it's essentially free. It doesn't really have to cost you anything when you're starting out. And you can use platforms like Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or YouTube which you can create free accounts on or podcast. You know, this is me expanding my personal brand by, by creating the Rich Mystic Man podcast. I'm just expanding my personal brand. I'm expanding the people that can tune in to me, start to build a relationship with, with me, start to like me, start to, you know, resonate with my content. So then when I have other um, products and services and offers and things that, you know, can support people on their journey, then this is building the scope of people that can connect in with me and resonate with my content and my value and start to uh, 
you know, see my ideas and start to get a sense of the person that I am, start to get a sense of the character that I am, start to get a feel for like uh, what my values are, what my purpose is, what my vision is, what my mission is. Um, and they start to resonate with that. And I know for myself or my wife, when we launched our um, online business here in Australia, when we first put it out, it took off, right? It took off and people resonated with it and we started making sales. Hand over fist, we started making more money than we ever had in the past. And one of the reasons, or actually one of the, yeah, one of the main reasons why this happened is because my wife and I had both been building a personal brand. And you don't have to have thousands of followers or even you don't have to have millions of followers or even thousands of followers. You just need to have a handful of people that know, like, and trust you. And we'd been building a brand online for many years. And this is just me sharing my insights, me sharing, you know, my views of the world, me sharing tips, me sharing highlights, me sharing behind the scenes of things that I was doing, me traveling, um, things that I was learning, you know, me sharing insights of the world, you know, things that I like about the world, I don't like about the world, sharing my visions, uh, me writing, me being funny, me sharing, you know, myself, um, the inner and the outer world of Kleenex Morgan. For me, just sharing and showing up authentically on social media. And for me back then, the only platform I was using was Facebook. But some of these other ones weren't really around then. But my wife was the same. We're just sharing ourselves and, you know, sharing our, our, our truths and things that, you know, we believed in. And if you want to get a sense of like some of the things we shared, like check out myself, Kleenex Morgan. You could check out my wife, Christy X Ord. I'm on social media at, you know, Facebook or Instagram um, or even my YouTube channel. And you can start to get a sense for what we're about, right? But that's just us or myself building a personal brand. And so what happens is the greater amount of people that know, like, and trust you from building these personal brands, when you have products and services that you want to sell, right, you now have a greater audience to listen to. You know, you have a greater audience to connect with what the offer is that you have. So these are, these are pretty simple strategies. You know, it's, it's a bit to get your head around. But if you can make a commitment, right, to learning how to sell, finding a high ticket product, and if you don't have a high ticket product, then aligning with one or becoming an affiliate of one or just making a commitment to having a high ticket product that's, that's going to give you high ticket commissions and building a personal brand you have these three things then you now have like the right tools to build wealth to create a successful income to be able to sell things at a greater scale then you know by building having a personal brand you can do things at a greater scale and just sort of doing them one-on-one -on -one. or you know going out knocking door to door you know, what can happen is you build a personal brand, you have an audience of people that know, like, and trust you. You could do a few posts to sell out, to sell more product, to sell 10 products, or to, you know, you have some offer and you put it out onto social media or you have a, you have a list or you have a, an audience here on social media and you put out an offer and you have 10 people say, yeah, I'll buy that, rather than you going out to 100 people saying, would you like this, would you like this, would you like this, would you like this? Both can work. Both can be effective, but one just gives you more leverage. So building a personal brand, making a commitment to learn how to sell, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, and yeah, just making that commitment to go, all right, cool, I'm going to learn how to sell. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get in the driver's seat. Now, this is uncomfortable, but not avoiding it. It's like one of those things. It's like public speaking. A lot of people avoid it for, the, for their whole life. Like, like they'd rather just not speak, but it's like, nah, you know what, if you were to put yourself into the situation, into the trenches and just actually do it and speak and get out there and actually um, get into a situation where you're uncomfortable, then you're going to get better at it. The same thing with selling is that you might think that you suck at it, which you, you probably do. You know, I used to think the same thing. You might think it's really uncomfortable. It can be. But know that there's riches in it. There's a lot of growth that can happen within it. You know, for me having thousands of sales conversations, I can now jump on a, a podcast and express to my audience the importance of selling. 
I can run a workshop on, on sales and marketing and building a personal brand and leadership because I've, I've taken that path and I decided to get out of my own way and to learn and to make that commitment to refining and sharpening that ax. And I've worked, I've been to workshops, I've, you know, had sales trainers, I've, I've practiced, I've learned off different people, you know, I've tried selling different products and I have a high ticket product that I love, that brings value, that is leveraged, that I'm affiliated with, that gives me time freedom, and I have the ability to sell and create a high ticket commission. So learn how to sell, align with a high ticket product, and make a commitment today to build a personal brand. And that commitment today could be just like, all right, sweet, I wanna learn about personal branding. I'm just gonna start writing and sharing a little bit of content on my, on my Facebook page. Starting point, great. Write a post, share some insights, share some photos, share that you've just listened to this podcast and you love Clinex Morgan <laughs> and what you've learned, what you're starting to implement. Just start sharing the journey. And I'll share more about like personal branding and, and sales and having a high ticket product and what these things, things mean within my podcast, The Rich Mystic Man. And I'll dive deeper on this conversation and I'll bring in experts that can, yeah, share their wisdom in these different areas. I'll have conversations and interviews and things like that. If you haven't already, subscribe so you can stay up to date. Check in for new episodes, which I'll be releasing every week on The Rich Mystic Man. And if you're looking for a high ticket product to sell that you can align with and you want to be mentored by myself on how to do that, then go to www.clintxmorgan.com and you'll see there there's a tab that says work with me. Go check it out. See a masterclass which explains what we do. If it resonates, so commit to building a brand, learning how to sell, find a high ticket product. When you have those three things, you really can become the, you, you're in the driver's seat and you have the ability to create the amount of income that you want to create. The only limit is the limit that you put on yourself. And the only limit, it could be your time. And then another discussion we can have down the track is creating automation and, and having uh, other people that are selling these products, which uh, you're generating income from their, their efforts, which is next level uh, affiliate marketing, building a team, which then gives you more freedom and more, more money. And then also having automation and sales systems and products and, and funnels and things like that that can be running on autopilot that's take, doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you that then frees up even more time and gives you a, a less of a cap and an infinite earning potential greater than what you did um, when it was just you selling. But until then, if you're just starting out, it's like just learn how to sell, find a high ticket product or create a high ticket product, build a personal brand, and then leverage that personal brand to sell. All right, guys, big love. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Shop on.